All right, y'all. Next step, we're gonna install some more water plumbing stuff. Water plumbing stuff. More plumbing stuff for the recirculating shower. So we've got two hoses there, two PEX pipes coming out. The red and the blue. Those are coming from the Wabasto out through here. So the red one there is going to go up to the shower mixing valve upstairs. And the blue one here is going to be coming from all the filters and the pump and everything like that. So we've got to figure out where we're going to install those filters. Um, probably gonna be right in this area here. And then uh, we also need to install the tank that we're gonna have dedicated. That's right, originally we're gonna use this tank right here, uh, the second gray tank, but uh, we found out that we needed more gray water storage. So we ended up plumbing both of those together and just with a T fitting between the two of them. And now we found for a great deal, um, a 20, gallon tank that fits perfectly right in this area here. So we're gonna plumb that, the drain that we originally plumbed to the back end of this one here to that tank and then uh, get all the other components set up. Uh, this should be pretty interesting. I've seen it on YouTube that people have done this successfully and I just wanna see if we could do it ourselves. So one of the reasons why we were thinking about doing a recirculating shower is we started to do a little math. Uh, one of the things we have right over here is 100 gallons of fresh water. Now, if you have a shower head that's putting out one and a half gallons per minute, and let's say you take a shower for 10 minutes, now 100 gallons is going to be completely depleted in about 6.6 .6 showers. So that's about three and a third shower per each of us. Now, if you're off boondocking, that's not so great because you need your fresh water for drinking, for also cooking. And so building a recirculating shower sounds like a pretty good deal because it can hold its own reservoir of water and we continue using that water, filtering it and having basically endless hot water. So we're gonna hook it up to the Wabasto and get it all plumbed and piped and see if it will keep up the hot demand that we require. All right, so starting to lay out some of the components that we're going to be using in this part of the build. So something interesting is that Pentair, they were like maybe three times more expensive than this system, but it's the same system. So it looks the same, just got a different name. This one's called Geek Pure Big Blue Water Housing Filter. So let's take a look and see what's different. Right out of the gate, we bought a uh, sediment filter. So this is, uh, looks like uh, five micron and service life six to 12 months. So that's good. And then also a carbon filter came with it. And these are the same size as the um, the ones that we have for the pent air system. And this carbon filter looks like it is also five micron, six to 12 months of service life. That's pretty awesome. Considering this is a recirculating shower, might be a little bit less. All right, and wrench, housing wrench. bag and there's some screws all right so i'll put all this flyawayable stuff there all right the housing feels the same one thing to note though already out of the gate is that geek pure is using brass fittings already um, versus pentair is using the plastic fittings so i'm gonna go ahead and give points to geek pure so far for uh, for this. The housing specifications are the same, it looks like. Uh, it has a purge valve in, out, very good. Something that they didn't include is the male-to-male -male adapter, which connects two of them together. So we had to buy this separate. It's a one inch male-to-male because -male these are one inch uh, national pipe thread, MPT. So let's pop this open. Take a look on the inside. The threads are massive, just like uh, Pentair. 
It comes with a pre-installed uh, O-ring and this O-ring is actually in a groove. Unlike the Pen Air one, it just kind of, it's there's a small groove, but it's not really that big of a groove. Like that, nice, very good. I'm digging this so far, super robust. So I'll put that back on. All right, so we're gonna build this system out. Uh, came with some instructions, extra O-rings. The Pentair one did not come with extra O-rings. Some more screws. And let's, uh, this kit also came with a uh, nice heavy duty steel top. So that'll go there and get screwed on. But first we need to put the bolts together. All right, so here it shows there's an in and an out. So the water's gonna come in this side and out this side. So we need to make sure that we orient these both. There's in, there's out. So it looks like the pressure relief button is on the inside. So we'll orient them like that and then um, put this fitting in between them. There we go. Let's put on. So now this gets to be mounted somewhere under there. That'll be fun. So the pump gets to be mounted somewhere. All right, right out of the gate. This one is a lot longer than the Vqa. This is the Hqa and uh, it is a fraction of the price compared to the Viqua, but it is a lot longer. The recirculating shower 
filters are going in nice. I got this bracket mounted up top, got the backboard installed there, um, and that's mounted the same way as we did the other backboards with a piece of angle iron on the top and the bottom and then bolted with 3 8 inch bolts. Um, and then this is using quarter inch uh, machine screws with uh, nylock nuts on the back of those screws. Now to mount this UV cylinder, we got these brackets here. And uh, I was originally gonna hang them from the ceiling up here, but I was just like, you know what? What if we mounted it on the front edge of this plate? And then that would be able to basically just float in the correct orientation right here at the top. And uh, we'll be able to plumb. There's plenty of room above it to plumb that. So initially I was going to build a wall right here and extend this one out. Uh, but I think we actually have plenty of room behind this wall here for the pump and there's room for me to access it. So from the side over here. So I'm gonna move these tools out of the way here and I want, want to mount the pump in this orientation right behind the wall so that the fresh water or the water can come in from the tank on this side because the tank's going to be off in that back uh, in between the chassis and then the pump can take the water through the uh, accumulator tank here even though the accumulator tank doesn't need to be in line it just needs to be in a T uh, this is the best orientation for us and the accumulator tank instruction says to put the threaded uh, nipple towards the sky if possible. It's the best orientation for winterizing, um, so I might as well do that as well. If you remember previously, that is what we originally did to drain the shower into the gray tank over here. Uh, but we're no longer going to do it like that because it's going to go into the 20 gallon tank that we're going to set over here. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy and I'm going to uh, uh, epoxy this, this hole up here shut and take out this uh, whole pipe system that we have. We're going to leave the hepbo and then flow directly into the new gray water tank. This is one of the bungs that came off of the threaded portion of the tank that we're not going to use. However, it fits perfectly over the hole that we originally drilled to uh, have the, the drain come in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy this onto the hole and it fits perfectly. So, and whenever I say perfectly, it is actually a little bit, a little bit bigger by maybe half an inch or so. So, uh, so there's anywhere it wiggles, there's zero hole that's seen. So I'm thinking of loading this whole edge with epoxy, um, just this little trough and over the edge and then using some, some tape to tape it in place while it sets. Now this stuff is called panel bonding adhesive 08115. So uh, our diesel mechanic said, this stuff is really expensive. I think it was like 90 bucks for this tube set. There's two tubes in there and you just mix it equal parts. Like one is a little bit bigger diameter than the other, but if you push them equally, um, then you just mix it up. And uh, it comes with mixing tips, but we're not gonna use this entire thing all at once. And once it's in the mixing tips, uh, I don't know. It looks like uh, you could probably reuse the tip, but he said that they get clogged super fast. Uh, so he said just mix it one-to-one uh, -one as it comes out, nice and even, 
and then uh, mix it and then it's got a little bit, it's got 90 minutes of working time, four hours of clamp time, and it'll be completely cured in 24 hours. So let's see how this stuff goes. Go, 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 go! Get Brian some TP for his bunghole. Like a mango inchworm over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there it goes. Hey, I don't know if I've talked to you guys about this, but I am now cleaning up my mess. And it's pretty messy. Check this. <laughs> Look at that. Root me goot. I'm just sanding that away. So it's gone. I've done a pretty good job over here. Look how sweet that looks. This is just some wood filler that they put in there. That's kind of cementy. Yeah, I'm just cleaning this up, getting it the best that I can. This side's already done. Looking gorgeous. Ooh, the wind's really picking up. It's sunny all day. Now, the thunderstorm is rolling in from the east. There he is. That guy. That handsome devil. Look at him, being all cute and stuff. Cute and bashful. You're fucking cute. You know that? Y'all want to take a look at my bunghole? <laughs> <laughs> take him to the bunghole. All right. So I couldn't really take you under here because it was quite difficult. So let's see. <sighs> There we go. Okay. My bunghole is all taped up. Got a nice, uh, got all of that epoxy on there to plug it up. Uh, and uh, now we can then plumb that to the new tank. But we got a lot of other things to do. So we'll keep working towards endless showers. I'm trying to make you a shower, right? Make me a shower. I'm trying to make you a shower, girl. Found this little thing. A little plug. Yeah. Right there. See. This guy. Stuff. I hate that stuff. I know. This is an aquarium filter. We're gonna take this and cut it in a little circle and stuff it into the drain so that it collects thick stuff like hair. And I don't know what else would really be in there that's you don't want in the system, but you know, stuff. We're gonna eyeball this. Cut it a little too big for the hole and maybe kind of like a not so perfect circle. We got a couple sheets of this stuff, so should last us a while. I don't really want to get the trimmings in the drain. That's really nice. Ba-ba! Perfect! Alright, let's shove it down on there. Absolutely gorgeous! My goodness, that's beautiful.
I cut a couple pieces of angle iron and also got a little piece of galvanized sheet metal, bent it over, had a safe edge on it, and that's gonna hold down that front edge there. And then this is gonna sit on top of there. So that the uh, the bolt hole over here goes through that part, and this helps distribute the load there. And then that's gonna happen the same on that side over there. So I just need to drill some holes now. So we'll probably drill one hole. Right about there. And then we'll drill the other hole just right here. And for this one, do the same sort of thing. All right about there. And then another one over here. And that should distribute the load. And then on this back wall, I don't know if you can see that in there, that back wall there is gonna hold the that side of the tank. And then this wall here will hold this side of the tank. And this is gonna basically be squished against the wall with this system. And this strap will keep it from bouncing up forward side. This will also help it with the angle iron. Good morning. So in the winter when we were building these doors and this underbody, um, a lot of the spray paint jobs that we were doing were not turning out amazing just because of the sheer temperature. It was way too cold to be spray painting and then the curing was just kind of off. So I've noticed that in a few places here, we've got a little bit of rust. So what I'm gonna do, I've just uh, used the mineral spirits, cleaned off the edge, and I'm just gonna hand paint on um, a little bit more of our rust coat white paint uh, to make sure that, you know, we keep this thing in tip top shape. As you can see, it's really not a lot of rust to be concerned about. But I did notice a little bit here and I don't like that. So, you know, you spend a lot of time working on something, you want to make sure that it's in good condition and that you protect it so that, you know, you don't make more work for yourself in the future. All right, y'all. I think the hardest part of the recirculating shower is already done. We got the diesel heater installed, the Webasto. If you haven't seen that installed, check it out. Uh, we got the filters put onto the backboard and we got the holding tank for the system installed. So I thought this was a 20 gallon tank. I never measured it. Uh, the guy said it was a 20 gallon tank because we bought this second hand. Uh, the guy was just uh, changing his water tanks out uh, and changing sizes or something. But this was the perfect size for us. Come to find out it's not a 20 gallon tank. It is a 16 gallon tank, which is fine. We've seen other people do recirculating showers and they're all like, oh, I use a 10 gallon tank. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I think that a little bit more volume might be a little nicer. Um, so it is a 16 gallon tank. And it's the same type of tank as our 100 gallon tank over here. Uh, but in this case, it's just smaller and it fits underneath the chassis perfectly. So I'm super happy with how the mounting went. This thing is solid. I've never done a little corner strap like this, but I saw some pictures on the internet of people securing different ty types of tanks using a corner mount. And so considering on the back end of the, of the tank over there, the chassis is holding the 
top edge down. So now having this corner held down with the angle iron to prevent it from moving around, I think it's gonna work pretty freaking good. If not, guess what, it's DIY. We can take it apart and try something else, right? So next up to connect between the Fernco that is attached to the Hepvo and the grommet that is the uh, the entrance into the tank where the basically the drain of the shower is gonna drain into this tank. And so we've got a plug in the original fill port because we're not gonna use that fill port. This top left one here, we're gonna use as our fill because we're gonna have it plumbed into our main system just for filling up. It smells like someone just got sprayed by a skunk out here. I hope Pepe Le Pew is not anywhere close because it is stinky out here now, man. Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. Adios, cabron. <laughs> so that top left one up there is going to be connected to this one over here that has the valve on it. Um, this bottom left one, although it's only a half inch, that's gonna be the drain. That's fine, it's only a 16 gallon tank. It won't take too long to drain 16 gallons. So that's what that guy's gonna be. And then this guy right here on the right, this is going to be the tank to pump connection. So I'm super excited. And we also have the vent on top. The Are vent's up excited? there, so we gotta get that poke through the, the hole where the other one's going through also. So I am excited. He's excited. And she's the painter. Look at her paint. Look at her go. This is really a silly little brush for this task, but I'm doing it anyways. Just be sure to hold your pinky out, girl, girl. All right, first up, we're going to connect the flexible braided hose uh, from the tank to the pump. And halfway in between, we're going to have a shutoff valve. And uh, what that'll help do is uh, it'll give us the opportunity of shutting off the tank to the pump. So if we need to uh, clean out the strainer, for instance, or isolate the filters for just a little bit, like to change the filters uh, or clean the filters, then we'll be able to. Um, I've got a diagram that I've created. Uh, we're gonna put this in Get Your Schoolie On so everybody who's in there can get access to the high resolution version of the diagram. You guys riveted on the edge of your seat? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think this way so we can read it. Other direction. Other direction? Yeah. Um, use you the, can't use, read it that way. Use the, level, the lever real quick. The other way. Oh, then you can't Because that's, that's the position it'll actually sit in all the time. All the time. Except when we shut it off. Look at that. Tank to pump. Nice, good job. Such a beautiful thing.
boots in the shower? Yeah, it sucks. She's wearing boots in the shower. Oh, so am I. We're gonna have to wash the shower already and we haven't used it. We desperately need a shower. The shower is cleaner than us. Yeah, it is. All right. Oh my God, I love it so much. You guys are gonna have to wait for the shower scene. It keeps seeming like we're doing like one step forward, two steps back every day. Seems to be some kind of, oh, some kind of obstacle or challenge. Look at this lighting. Ugh. Yeah. Every day it seems like there's some kind of challenge. Like the other day we were almost done plumbing the recirculating shower and then we ran out of like two or three plumbing parts that we needed. I have exciting news though. We got the rest of the plumbing parts and now I think that we're gonna pause on the walls. The plumbing parts just came in and we're gonna go down to the basement and see if we can have our shower ready by the end of the night. That would be a dream because I don't think Brian and I have ever been dirtier in our whole lives. Commence! <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes, Garcia, do you think we can make it? I don't know. Maybe. Let's see. So we need tea here. I'm going to probably put the tea probably a little high up. That way this line stays nice and tight up here. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So probably right about there. So this area from here to just past where Brian's sitting, this is the only area that we really have kind of open for extra stuff, <laughs> right? Like tools yeah. and stuff. Everything yeah. else in the underbody, like on the other side is water stuff up near the front and then all of our electrical stuff. And then the entire center is just water tank stuff. So, I mean, there's little nooks and crannies we could slide things, I'm sure, but we're pretty packed. Next up with this recirculating shower is we're installing a pressure regulator. So what this little device does is it's got a screw here on top and you can actually change the pressure on the incoming side to the output side. So the, if the supply pressure is too high, so in this case, the Webasto can't have more than 36 PSI of pressure, but the pump pumps 45 PSI and you can't adjust the pressure because there's no pressure switch to adjust the output pressure of it, of this particular pump that we're using. Then you have to have a pressure reducer like this one, pressure regulator. So this one here has a gauge on it. Um, the reviews were really good on this one. I'll go ahead and drop a link in the description on which one we actually bought. But this one is typically used for RVs for the incoming pressure, like let's say an RV, hooked up to a garden hose uh, on a hose bib for fresh water. So it came with uh, hose ends, so just threaded hose ends. So we ended up having to get a male garden hose thread to three quarter inch female national pipe thread or FIP. And then for one for the incoming side, for the outgoing side, we had to get the male garden hose end to female three quarter inch national pipe thread or three quarter inch FIP. So these things have little washers in there. Um, I'm also going to reinforce it with some pipe dope. It looks like this might be actually threaded in and I'm not sure if it really is or not. Um, like if it's sealed at the factory. So I don't want to experiment with that right now because we really need a shower, you know what I'm saying? What I'm gonna do is because uh, garden hoses notoriously leak, I'm gonna put a little bit of pipe dope on the threads instead of like uh, Teflon tape, just because um, I've had pretty good success with pipe dope so far. 
and uh, not so good success with threaded uh, tef or Teflon tape for threads. So we'll give uh, the pipe dope a nice stir because it likes to be stirred, right? So we'll give this a nice stir and then we'll thread up our, uh, we'll dope up our threads, get them all dopey with pipe dope. And then we'll tighten these, uh, these little fittings on. So we're gonna put a nice bead of this on the threads here. I don't know if we're gonna actually be able to take a shower tonight because we still have to pressure test this thing. Luckily though, this thing only gets pumped up to 36 PSI and no more, no more than 36. So the probability of having a leak at a fitting, really low. Okay, so something to think about also is this pressure reducer, pressure reducing valve is going to be on the uh, discharge side of the pump. So the pressure side of the pump and it's gonna be after all the filters because we need the pressure to get past the filters. Cause I don't think that the filters, I need to look to be sure, but the filters actually have a pressure limit on them on the minimum limit of incoming pressure. So if it is too low, then water won't go through the filters, which is why we're doing this on the discharge side right before it enters the Webasto. So that's good. So I got this big ass wrench here and I'm gonna put it on this guy here and tighten this up. I'm not, I'm gonna make sure it's nice and snug and just to let you know the O-rings are in place. I might not need an extra wrench cause it's, it's tightening up real good there. Oh, that's real good. I can see the pipe dope coming up around the edges. Very nice. All right, so that's one side. Next side, we've got our mail uh, end. And we're gonna make sure our little gasket right on the inside there. I don't know if you can see, it's getting kind of dark. Here, let me see if this light helps. Oh, there we go. Here, let's uh, adjust our exposure for you just a little bit. Ah, there we go. That's a little better for you. I just turned on the underbody storage light. How convenient was that? All right. I wanna make sure that these threads are nice and doped up because we do not wanna leak. We want, we wanna be successful with this particular one right out of the gate so we can finally get a shower. How long has it been since we had a shower? Uh, April 30th and today's June 11th. April 30th <laughs> and today's June 11th. Not sure if you could hear Aaron, uh, but yeah, that's over a month without a shower. Uh, lots of deodorant. Sink baths. Oh yeah, yeah, we've had sink baths. I've washed my hair, Aaron's washed her hair. We've washed her butts, all that. All that good stuff. We, we've washed everything. It's just not actually having a shower. And it's, uh, even though Aaron says it's a sink bath we're having, don't let that confuse you with a Japanese soaking tub at least, because at least you can actually submerge yourself halfway with something like that. Um, although we have had uh, two children inside the sink at one time. Combined weight, what was it, 45 pounds? <laughs> so the sink actually can hold it. If you haven't seen us build that sink, oh my gosh. If you want a copper sink and don't want to spend thousands of dollars, check out this video right up in here because uh, that sink actually came out really, really good and I'm very, very happy with it. Are you happy with it, Erin? Love she loves it. She loves it. All right, we are doped up. We are all dopey right now. So I'm gonna screw this on. What's really cool about this pipe dope stuff is, uh, or Pro Dope by Masters, is it lubricates the threads as you're putting it on. So it actually makes it easier to screw on your fittings, which is quite nice, I'd have to say. So I got that hand tight, and then I'm gonna go just uh, maybe like two thirds tighter with a wrench just cause I really don't want to leak from this connection here. There we go. You don't want to over tighten these things cause if you do, bad things happen. All right, there we go. Now we're, we're, uh, we're, we're to female to female now. So now let's uh, go ahead and dope up a couple more fittings. 
That's right, the dope doesn't stop there, folks. The dope keeps on flowing. We've got other fittings. What? The dope? <laughs> I'm freaking, I'm tired, y'all. Not gonna lie, the, the end of the month is coming quick and we've got a lot of work to do. And uh, like that leak in the, in the roof that we had, we have not had a leak. And then all of a sudden we, it's coming from a seam too. Like we had all the right stuff up there. I'm very disappointed with cool flex. Um, so. That's a kick in the gonads. Yeah. Uh, we used so much cool flex up there. Stiff kick in the gonads and strife. Gonads and strife. Gonads and strife. <laughs> How you doing, girl, girl? Oh, my feet. Yeah. Toast. Toast or any. You did zip tie it up pretty nice. That's not, probably not a forever thing, but. It could be. It could be. It could be. At least for now, it's great. It's yeah. forever right now. Right. It's forever until we change it. That's shower desperation right there. What you're sensing. Hmm. <laughs> it's a humid day, y'all. I feel dirty. Dirty animal. There's only been days worth of humidity just accumulating. Accumulating in all the spots. <laughs> Especially the nooks. And the crannies. <laughs> and on the bits and bobs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel like I get tired or every day a bit. All right, let's connect this. Okie dokie. Alrighty, all the lines are run, and now we get to start filling the tank with water. So we'll do the recirculating, recirculating tank fill. And then it's starting to fill up the tank right there. Doing good. We're about three quarter of the way, maybe two thirds of the way. I think I'm probably gonna have it filled to about here, so that way there's no pressure on this. And uh, and I oh I haven't vented the tank. The vent's there, but I haven't put the line to the outside. I'll do that also soon. All right. So right out of the gate, we're gonna turn the tank to pump on. So there's the water. So now we've got to turn the pump on. Shower supply is open. Make sure the purge is shut. All right. Let's uh, charge the system. And Aaron's going inside to turn the pump on because the pump's all wired up. And I'm gonna check the PSI and make sure that this PSI is not too high. We've got to purge all the air out of the system. Water's probably gonna be spewing out from the mixing valve up there. So hopefully it all goes well. Yep, ready. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh yeah, we got water, and this is just at the cold, just slightly open. You can see the water draining through. No leaks anywhere. Very good. Very good. Rock paper scissors for first shower. 
Ah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs>